Hey, I'm Chris Zeff from Make Everything, and today we're gonna to be talking about rust and paint removal on vintage tools just like this. You guys have seen me restore a bunch of stuff, and I'm gonna answer some questions and dispel some myths about how to get old rust and paint off of tools without using any chemicals. Check it out. All right, so everybody knows about the wire wheel, right? But there are many different types of wire wheel, and I think a lot of people don't really understand how to use them effectively, which then leads them to having a shorter life and also just becoming a little more dangerous. So I've got a couple different types of wire wheel here. Now these are a knotted wire wheel and you can see because of the way the wires are twisted. And this is a cup loose wire wheel. Now when you're spinning these at a super high RPM, these cup wire wheels will typically tend to fan out. But what you're also, you're also gonna notice is that these little wires will kind of fling out of these things as you abrade them. You know, they're basically in there, uh, they're crimped in. So any wire wheel that you're gonna use is inevitably gonna lose some of these little wires. Now these things can be like pretty hard to deal with. Um, one of the reasons that if you've ever used one of these before, you've flung a bunch of wires is because you're probably spinning them much too fast. Um, these knotted ones, the wires tend to hold a lot better. And obviously if you buy a high quality wire wheel, you're going to get a lot better retention on the wires. These knotted wire wheels are for a lot more aggressive paint and rust removal. Now, one of the ways that you can avoid shooting wires all over the place is by using a variable speed grinder. I talked about this in my corner grinding video. This is a variable speed grinder from Milwaukee. So you can see, we can turn the speed up and then we can turn the speed all the way down and it's a lot gentler of a motion. Now, the other thing you wanna be careful of anytime you're using one of these is any loose clothing. Now, I'm wearing my PAPR system, which is a powered respirator, which keeps my sweatshirt in tight to my body. But these things, let me tell you, if they grab your shirt, they're gonna take you for a ride. You always wanna make sure that you're very, very controlled of your grinder anytime you're using a wire wheel. The other thing is they're gonna shoot a lot of grinding dust and a lot of rust in the air, so you wanna protect yourself. So I'm wearing a respirator, and I'm gonna show you just quickly how a wire wheel like this is gonna take some of this rust off and get us closer to bare metal. Now, similar to this uh, four and a half inch wire wheel, you can also get these in much smaller sizes for a die grinder. And then what these are gonna do is obviously they're gonna help you get in a little bit tighter spaces. This one is one of my favorites and I wanna show you how it fans out. This thing's got a quarter inch shaft and you use it in a die grinder. This little die grinder is battery powered from Milwaukee and it is one of my favorite tools. Now this thing is also variable speed. Now watch that way this fans out. When it fans out like that, you know, you're spreading out. It's gonna make them wanna kind of go flying. So if we turn our grinder down to the slowest speed, this is 10,000 RPMs, we can control how much it fans out a lot better and we can get a lot more control when we're getting in there grinding. You don't need a tremendous amount of speed to remove rust like this. So let's pull some of this off with the die grinder. So one of my other favorite types of discs to use when I'm cleaning and removing rust is these polyclean discs. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about these when we're removing paint, but they also work great for removing really stubborn rust and mill scale. So these are a structured abrasive, um, you know, they, they kind of look like they're covered in glue. 
and basically they wear away as you use them. And what's cool about these is if you're trying to get into a particularly tight corner, if you sort of force these in, they'll basically blend to fit that corner. Pieces of these will shoot off um, and chunk off as you go. So you wanna be careful and always wear protection when you're using these. But this also isn't gonna leave any little bits of wire to stick in you and uh, they're a little easier to get on and off. So I'm gonna clear a little bit of the back, the tailpiece of this vise, which will expose this crack using this disc. So one of the things to note is the difference in finish you get from a wire wheel versus one of these polyclean discs. I'm gonna do half of this side of the vise with this. This side I already did with the wire wheel so you can see the difference if you're going for a raw look. All right, so you can kind of see based on this casting line, the difference between these two finishes. You're gonna get a lot darker of a look and a little more natural of a look with the wire wheel and a lot shinier of a look with the polyclean. But even just touching these, the polyclean leaves a much, much smoother surface. Um, and if you're gonna patina this, you might want that so that your blackening agent could get in there and really, really make the finish on this stand out versus on something that's a little rougher, you're probably gonna lose a little bit of detail. So another really effective way to strip rust is with one of these non-woven abrasives. So this one is a 100 grit. Um, and you can see it just goes on the end of this little die grinder. This has a 5,000 RPM optimal speed with a 10,000 RPM maximum speed. So I'm gonna set my die grinder on here to the 10,000 RPM range. And then I'm gonna be able to get in some of these curved sections in these corners and really kind of give this a unified finish um, and give it a little bit of striation, which might add to the look. All right, so rust removal is easy. You know, a little bit of wire wheel, a little bit of some of these non-woven abrasives, and you can really quickly and easily get a beautiful raw look on a vintage piece of equipment. But paint removal can be a little more difficult. Now, this reed vise I got out of a basement shop, and it's got a few coats of paint on it. Um, now, stripping the paint off with these little nooks and crannies can be tricky. So we're gonna go through a couple of the same products, but I'm also going to show you the way that they work a lot differently when you're stripping off paint. We'll start again with the wire wheel and I'll show you how I can clean up a detailed area like where these letters are using a looser wire wheel once we get a little bit in there with the knotted wire wheel. Now I'm able to get a good amount of the paint off, but I'm gonna to wanna to get in there a little bit tighter. So we're gonna use a looser wire wheel, which is gonna get inside those letters a little bit better. And we're gonna use it on the die grinder. So the back of this fixed jaw, when I was hitting it with the wire wheel, I was basically not getting anywhere with some of this paint. There's definitely a couple layers of paint on here and probably even some Bondo from the rough casting. Now, with a lot of vintage tools, especially vices, these were, these were cast pieces. So there's a lot of porosity in the metal itself. There's a lot of little nooks and crannies that you can get a lot of paint in. And if you wanna paint them again, you really wanna get that old stuff off of there before you put your next layer of paint on there. 
that's where something like these polyclean discs really shine because they're going to be able to very, very quickly tear off all this paint where you might have to spend a lot more time with the wire wheel and you want to get this done as quickly and efficiently as possible. So the last product I want to talk about is, you know, these little non-woven abrasive pads. These are on a little quick lock arbor. So these have a tiny thread and they thread right on there. If you're in the automotive industry or do this kind of work, these aren't going to be anything that's very special to you. But um, mainly what I've shown you is working on big surfaces. Now, when you have to do smaller surfaces, you need a smaller tool to get in there. And what's nice about these is you can get stripping discs that also work off of that same quick lock arbor and you can really get into some of these hard to reach places. Again, this stripping disc is nice and thick. So if I try to blend it into this corner, it's gonna reshape itself into sort of a cone, which is gonna help me work that much more effectively. I'll show you how some of these work to get into this little painted section and I'll show you how I get into some of the tighter areas as well using some of these little stripping discs. All right, that about does it for this video, short and sweet. I really just wanna show you guys that you can do these types of restorations, removing paint and old rust that's been there for a hundred years without using anything really specialized. You know, a wire wheel and a grinder, um, even a die grinder, they're not something that's totally out of bounds. But I will say, if you're gonna make the investment into an angle grinder, let's say you don't already have one, I would recommend definitely buying a variable speed grinder. A variable speed grinder is gonna help you in every way. It's gonna allow you to grind at high speeds when you're just removing material and low speeds when you wanna do fine work like removing rust with a wire wheel or a surface conditioning disc like I showed you. The thing I like about the ferret abrasives in particular is that they always show you the optimal RPM and the maximum RPM of their consumables. And that's a big deal. So, you know, some of these consumables, especially wire wheels can be a little expensive and if you're gonna run them too fast, you're gonna run through them faster. You're also gonna throw wire and you're gonna put yourself in a more dangerous and less optimal position than you could be if you're running them at the proper speed. So definitely look into variable speed grinder and a variable speed die grinder if you wanna do this type of work. There's a million ways to remove rust and remove paint from things like this without chemicals. So if you have any other ones and any other tips, please leave a comment down below. I always like to have a discussion down there and share information with other people. I really enjoy restoring tools. There's something very therapeutic about it, especially some of these, which you know have either been locked away in a basement or in case this one, sitting outside getting rusted for God knows how long. So if you wanna give something like this a try, invest in a couple of wire wheels, a couple of stripping discs and go for it. You can get stuff like this at estate sales, garage sales, Craigslist and Facebook marketplace for really cheap. And with a little bit of work, a little bit of elbow grease, you can turn them into beautiful pieces. If you've watched my channel before, you know I've restored a bunch of vices and other tools and it's really something that I enjoy and it just adds value and it adds a little bit of character to the things in your shop. You know, when you've restored something from a rust pile like this, and you've really given it new life. It can work for another 100 years, and I really feel like it pays homage to the manufacturing that went into these tools whenever they were made, you know, some of these over 100 years ago. Anyway, I wanna say thank you to Farad for providing me with the abrasives and the stripping discs for this project. If you want any more information about their stuff, check out the links in the description of this video. They make a huge array of products, and I highly recommend you looking into getting one of their tool catalogs, which has thousands of products which could show you 
totally new things that you may never even have heard of, which could help you on future projects. So check that out. I'm gonna also throw a link on how you can get one of their tool catalogs for free in the description of this video. I hope you enjoyed this. If you wanna see what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis here in the shop, follow me right here at Make Everything Shop. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and give it a thumbs up. Again, I'm Chris Epp from Make Everything, and I hope to see you on the next one.